Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome in everyone. My name's Hannah. I'll be leading today's Wednesday workshop. Um, as always, like I said, feel free to drop your guys' questions into the q and I'm just going to go over some um, entry-level stuff. So Wednesday workshop, we're just about answering questions live, going through any of your guys' live strategy questions, or if you're running into any issues and you want to see how something can be done and open to close. Um, that's sort of what this call is great for. Um, while we're waiting for questions to get in, I'm just going to go over a couple things with just open to close and resources. As always, if you guys are looking to, um, you know, submit a ticket, maybe something, um, more than just strategies happening in your account and you need to reach out to us and support, you're welcome to chat with us by selecting this little chat icon at the bottom of our homepage, or when you're logged in, you should also see that same chat icon. You can send us a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. You can also email us at help at open to close. If you're trying to resource first before you're reaching out to us, if you want to get to our support um, center, you can click on the little learn tab and go to help guides or within open to close, you can go to your person icon and you can go to support center. That's going to take us to, to the same place um, that our support center. So let's say you were looking for something regarding follow up boss. You can just type in follow up boss, search for that. And here you can see the list of things that we have regarding follow up boss, as well as some Wednesday workshops where we previously talked about that follow up boss integration. You can also select an article and here at the top, you can go back to follow up boss, and that's going to show you the whole collection of articles that are pertaining directly to follow up boss. If you were looking for it, um, there's a lot of resources in here, um, for you guys. So if you're ever looking for something, definitely feel free to check out this first, um, or reach out to us first too. Either one works. Um, if you're looking for more webinars like today's webinar, you can go to our little learn tab, go to webinars, and you'll see the list of webinars that we have coming up. So obviously we're on our Wednesday workshop. Next week, we're going to be going over intake forms and property templates. And then the following Wednesday, we're going to be going over using Open to Close 101. Um, this call is really great for anyone who is actively using the system um, and maybe is like, am I missing a part? I feel like, you know, there's an easier way to handle this. That's a great call for that. Um, it's also a great call for any new users or agents who want to come and see, okay, well, what does it look like on the TC side? Or what does it look like on my internal side to use the system? Cool. Um, one other thing that we have that's kind of new, this might not pertain to most of you guys because most of you guys are probably already clients of Open to Close, but if you're brand new and you've joined this call, we also have new onboarding resources as well. I'm just going to go to our learn tab again, click on onboarding. It's going to take us to a landing page. We've got information on how to do it yourself, getting into open to close, do it with you, which is a um, working with an implementation team member to uh, customize your account together and then do it hourly, which is like hourly calls. Um, the hourly calls might be helpful for some of you guys. It just kind of depends. I definitely suggest, you know, setting a time, reaching out, talking with them. If that's something that you think that you might need. Um, discussing that with implementation further. Cool. Well, we don't have any questions yet. Um, so let me go ahead and grab our list of FAQs that we've had. Cool. So it looks like one of the main FAQs that you guys might be running into is that no worries, Todd. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing if you don't have any problems. It's good that that's working for you. <laughs> Um, looks like one of the questions that we have is, uh, the client portal users cannot log in. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can open up, um, a different web page. Here we go. Cool. Um, when we talk about sending our client portals that invite, I believe it's this one, um, they're going to receive an email from you guys that looks something like this. So I'm going to grab the title of this particular, um, email. I'm going to drop it into the chat. So if you guys ever send it to yourselves, and you're like, what email do I need to look for? I get a billion, Hannah. That's the title of that particular email right there. Um, but they're going to get an email like this. They're going to be prompted to go to open to close, to use this password, to log in. And then they'll be prompted to reset the password, enter in a couple more details like a phone number, and then go from there. Now, when they go to open to close, I'm just going to go to home, go back to our open to close account. They're going to click on log in. And when they click and they enter in their information, they're going to select login. It seems like the issue was actually running into is they kept clicking register <laughs> and then going, why can't I log in? We're going to want to go to login, enter in our login information and say login. 
Um, that client portal looks something similar to this. This is a client portal that I have set up for us to be able to review. I believe it's showing it. Um, here you can see that they can select that property. Based off of the permissions that I've given to that client portal, they have access to the timeline, to the details, to documents, specifically downloading and previewing and uploading documents, as well as they can send us a message if they need to. So if they need to reach out and say, hey, I'm curious about this, or I was wondering about this, they can send a message and that would go into your property with an open to close. So if I send a message here, I'm just going to send a test one. Um, let's go ahead and say new message. This is a Wednesday workshop test. And we'll say send. Cool. Now, when we go back into open to close, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this because we don't need it anymore. And we go to that property. And we go to messages. Voila. Here's that message directly from us, um, di directly from that, um, that client portal user. We've got a question. Can you give us an update on the mobile uh, revamp project? I don't have any updates right now. I can look through and see if we have any updates or if any updates have been posted. Um, I know that right now we're just continuing to, I mean, from what I do know, <laughs> what I can share, we are continuing to map out how we're going to tackle um, the mobile app. Um, we are planning on making the web page app that you guys have completely usable in a mobile app. So that's the reason why it's going to, you know, why it's, it's a big project for us to go through and do. Um, it'll have all the same functionalities as our current web app. Um, again, I don't know where they're at in the process of getting that set up, but, um, a lot of the things, um, are still, you know, they're, they're being, it's being worked on actively right now. That's, that's the most I can give. That's the most I know too. <laughs> um, but I'll check too. I'll check um, once we get through these, you know, any other questions that you guys might have, I'll I'll reach out and I'll see if we've got any other update. Cool. Hmm. Okay. So it looks like some people were having issues um, viewing documents. It would say couldn't load plugins. Um, they might have needed to install a PDF reader extension to their browser. I don't know if we have a suggested one. Um, with open to close, I feel like most general PDF readers should work. But if you're ever running into issues where you go to your documents, you click on that document and you can't see the document load here, it says cannot load, definitely feel free to reach out to us and we'll make a suggestion. Um, if you guys are using Chrome, it should have a PDF reader built in like Adobe or something like that already built into it. You might need to update your browser um, to be able to have that reflection show. Otherwise, definitely, like I said, reach out to us and we'll kind of help you out from there. Okay. So we had another question that was like, how do I get my task templates into open to close? I see what you guys have, but I want, um, a specific set of task templates that I use in here, something that I need to import. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to head to our three line icon, head down to our hammer icon, get into templates. We're going to scroll down to where it says new import, and we're going to select the import type, and we're going to make sure to select task templates. Now, when you're importing your task templates, this is what I would suggest. Have that name of that task, right? Uh, the name of that particular task in it. And then in the description, that's where you're going to include not only the due date for it, you know, what would that time frame look like for when that task needs to be completed? But I would also enter in the details of what that task is. Like, what, what would you be doing with that task? If it says something as simple as like um, upload compliance, docu uh, upload documents to compliance, right? Maybe in our description, it says log into dot loop, um, locate the loop or, um, you know, connect, uh, open to close to dot loop, open up the loop. Uh, push documents from open to close over to it. So it's basically think of your instructions that you would do to complete that task, as well as what would the date be? If, if it's due the same day as, you'd say same day as contract agreement kind of thing. And the reason I suggest this is that when you import that particular task template, instead of you having to toggle back and forth between a spreadsheet and um, the task template, you'd be able to just open up that particular task, select the details right here, it's this little three line icon, and this is where those um, that description is going to show up. Can we see an example of a CSV sheet? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can create one really quickly. 
Um, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go down to new import. I'm just going to have that. And then let me open up sheets, create a new sheet here. So once we create that new sheet, we're just going to want to grab that task template. These are going to be the columns at the top. So we're just going to do, and I, hopefully it'll do it for me. I want to do it like this. Nope. It's not going to do it like this. It's going to be your columns at the top. So really we just need to pop this into B. Again, like I said, I don't really care about having anything else here. The colors, the pin, the this, the that, or whatever, it's not really pertinent to me. I don't really care too much. But here you're going to have your columns at the top, task template, description, and then below this you'd have your task and your description. And then when you go to import that particular task template, it just has to be saved as a CSV. And you'll say locate and import it. I think I want to say I have one. Let me see if I can pull it open. I want to say that I do have one that I can show you guys how to import. Yeah, see if, and I really don't think that you need to set, and I, I completely understand, like, I don't think that you need to set the colors here. Cause again, when we have it imported, this is a lot faster, by the way, when we have it imported, you can just go, oh, these all need to be gray. Okay. Let me select all of them. Color, gray, set color, done. They're all gray. Right. This is a lot easier to do that. Same thing with when you're going through and you're marking your different tasks as priority, going back to that new import to tasks, critical or pinned. It's a lot easier. You're going to be updating the due date for it. So instead of having to go through and have it that it says, you know, this and this and this and this and this, it's easier to go and say, well, I'm going to be reviewing my tasks again. The only thing that's really important to me is the name of that task and the details. So that way I know, okay, well, I just got a new import. And again, I don't have one in here. I have to look in my G drive to see if I have any that I can import. Yeah. I don't have a good example of one right now that I can import. Um, but I would stick, keep it simple. Right. You know what I mean? Cool. Oh, you know what? Kelly just dropped a hint too with this as well. Um, she mentioned, be sure to actually just remove task title at the top. This will also be imported as a task. So really what it is, is put in the name of your task, task one, uh, do same day as contract acceptance, contract date. We'll just say that. Um, but you don't technically need the column at the top that says task title and description either. Technically, you don't need that when you import it. Um, let me see if I can just do this. Boop, there we go. So you can see here that I just created a quick uh, import sheet for me. I'll just do Wednesday workshop import tasks. Let me go ahead and save this as, oh, not that, edit. Nope, 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 nope. My blind. Sorry, I'm not saying the save as, oh, is it data? You can see here now that I don't usually go into this to, to bring out my information. Is it download? Here it is. Woo. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned that. See, I don't usually, I'm always used to the save as. <laughs> that was good. Okay, there we go. So now we have it downloaded as a CSV. We can say task template. Here I can just name it test tasks. Wednesday workshop, we'll locate that spreadsheet. Here we go. Here we see that spreadsheet and we'll say upload. So here at the top, you can see this is the first column. We'll say that's the task title. The second column, we'll say that's description. And that's it, simple as that. We don't ne technically need any of those other columns. Like I said, the main ones are gonna be the name of that task and then the description. Here, once we have that on there, we can say finalize import and we're good. We go to all imports. We're going to be able to see any imports that we've made. We can also delete it. This would remove that import completely. We can go to queued imports to see if there are any imports in queue. So if you're importing like a ton of information, I only had like what, 14 tasks on here. Um, but if you're importing something that's like, it's got a ton of information, it's a really big file, it might be underneath queued for a while. Now to look at that task template with an open and close, we're going to go to task templates and here's that task template up here at the top. I can select edit. And just like Kelly said, because I had task name and title at the top of my spreadsheet right here, 
it also imported that as a task, which for me is fine. I can just click on that little trash can icon and delete it. The task below that says task one. Here, if we see this little description icon is, and I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom in really quickly and scroll over. You can see it's a light purple color. So this means that we have like details underneath this area. If I click on it, it's gonna pull up in those details for me and show me the font um, that I had entered in on my spreadsheet here under my description right here. Part two of this question, is there a way to make it a parent child task for the import? I would have to look at the import. I don't believe there is because there's no way to schedule these tasks when we're bringing them in. So I don't believe there's a way to, to link them in the import um, as well. You would have to edit that task template afterwards. I want you to think of the import as bringing in just like the raw data. And then when you go to edit that task template, you'll still want to make sure that you go through and you link it to the things that you need to link it to, add in your due dates, add in everything else. The description, like I said, it's just a description here. It doesn't actually add on that due date for it. A date is not associated with this task until I select the date template. I'm sorry, the date icon here. And I say property date, or I link it to a task if I need to make a child task. Does everyone feel comfortable with how to edit these task cards or do we wanna do a quick overview of that? Okay. I'll do a I'll do a fast one, just like a quick overview. Obviously, we've got the ability to add in a new task, sort the tasks. It's just going to show us show us a list. Okay, cool, perfect, Felicia. So here it's going to just show us a list. If we click on sort tasks, this will allow us to reorder them if we need to. We can click on refresh tasks. It's just going to refresh the screen. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this little arrow here. That way, we can just focus on our task cards at this moment. Up at the top here, we've got this little drop down arrow. This just expands that task card. If you're follow up boss users, this might be helpful for you to select follow up boss here and make sure you have that set up so that you can push this task from open to close into follow up boss. We also have the ability to add on roles, add on tags. And if you're on that scale account, you'll be able to add on a condition. If you are not on the scale account, you are not going to see the ability to add condition. I'm on scale. That's why it shows up here. Here where it says parent child, that's just verbiage. If we click on this little chain icon though, this is where we can kind of chain link these tasks together. So I can chain task one to a different task on here. It depends on how you wanna do it. What I usually suggest when I'm going through and editing my tasks is I usually suggest going to the date icon here and then selecting the task. And this way you can kind of link them together. You can say that task one, which would not be a great example, we'll go down to task two. We'll say task two is going to be completed two days, two business days after task one has been completed, okay? And when I say update, I've now chain linked those two tasks together. This is the parent task one. This is the child task two, okay? So task one needs to be completed first and then task two will be scheduled. Task one, I could say task one needs to be based off of a property date. And the property date that I need it to be off of, let's go ahead and say I need it done the same day as contract acceptance. So all I've done here is select the time frame. I've selected property date, time frame, same day as contract acceptance and say update. And now we're going to see that date update here. So when you're going through and you're updating these, you don't necessarily need to update the title unless you do. If you do, click into the field. When it turns purple, you're editing it. When you press enter on your keyboard and it goes from purple to white, that means that it's saved. But you know, if you just imported it, you know that the task titles are good. It's really just a matter of clicking on that, um, that date options icon and making sure we're scheduling those tasks. Like I said, you can either leave it as none if you don't need a date associated with that task you can say that you want it based off of a property date, or you can say that it's based off of a task. Another example of having it based off of a property date, I'm just going to go down to task three and click on that little date icon again, is let's say this one's due a property date. We'll say it's due three business days. I can use calendar days. I can use calendar days skipping the weekends if I don't want to count the weekends. We'll go ahead and just say business days in this case. Here we're selecting when is it going to be done. So before or after a certain date, we'll go ahead and say after. And then here for our date option, this is going to show us all of the dates that we have currently available in our system. 
So if we have that date and we know, well, this is my main buyers under contract. So the dates that I'm going to be working with primarily are going to be like my earnest money or my execution date or my closing date, right? Here we can say, okay, well, earnest money. So we'll say three business days after earnest money due date is when task three is due. And I'll say update. Here it's going to update that task card. If you notice, it also collapsed it, right? And that's the reason why I kind of like clicking on this arrow and having our tasks open is so that when I'm going down this list, I can see if the task card is open, that means I need to edit something on it. Um, if I refresh the page, it's going to collapse all of them. But I just like to show that as like when you've updated something on here, I could even update the title, meow, meow, and press enter. That's going to update that particular field. When we update the date or when we add on a trigger, when we say that this is a reoccurring task, that's when it's going to close this task card uh, and it's going to minimize it similar to how this one was minimized. We can always reopen it by clicking on that drop down arrow again if we need to. For the other buttons that are here, we've got, and I'm going to zoom in and scroll down because it's a little small, I imagine. We've got excluded. If we want to hide this task from our portals, if we say exclude, it's going to hide it from the client portal, agent portal. Um, and if you give anyone else other portal access, it's going to hide it from there. It'll also hide it from the integrations as well. So keep that in mind. It will make it so that this task only shows up for internal users. This little zero here is the notes. So I can add in a note, test, say add, close. And here it'll change from zero to one. As I continue to add notes, that number is gonna continue to increase. I don't find people adding notes to their task templates, um, but when you're on the property, you might need a note. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that note. Next to that, we have that pinned icon. When I have it selected, it turns purple. That means that this task is gonna be pinned at the top of that task list. When it gets applied to my property, it's gonna be at the top of my property task list. Okay. We've also got our critical. This is just another way to alert that this task is critical. This is something that needs to get completed immediately. I see a lot of our users using the pinned and the critical in tandem with each other. So usually if it's pinned, sometimes it's marked critical. Um, but I rarely find that people are marking things as critical and not having them marked as pinned as well, right? Because it's usually something that you need to complete as soon as you can. You can have either or of these selected though. So you can use pinned if you need to know it needs to be pinned, or you can have it marked as critical if you need to sort it and use it as critical. We've got our internal details. Again, this is a great place to pop in just written verbiage. If you need to add in some links, you'll be able to add in a hyperlink if you need to. When you update that hyperlink, we're going to want to make sure that where it says open link in from current window, we're going to want to make sure it says new window. That way, when you click on that hyperlink, it opens up a new tab versus trying to open it up in your open to close window. Um, just a couple like strategy options that I usually like to share for that. Scrolling down, I'm going to say close. Next to that, we have our date icon. Um, just kind of covered dates, property date, task, kind of depends. And then we also have our trigger icon. Now, when you import your task templates, your triggers are not going to be associated to these tasks. The only thing that can be associated is like if we wanted to mark it as pinned or critical. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out really quickly, and we're going to build out a trigger for this first task. I'm going to pretend that this first task is actually my intro email to parties. Okay, that's what my first task is. When I click on my little trigger icon, it's going to open up this view. It's going to allow me to either apply a template if I've got trigger templates already built out or add on a trigger. A trigger is, a, is typically it's a form of communication. Sometimes it can be adding on more fields. Sometimes it can be adding on a task template or a document template or a one sheet or commission template. Triggers have a lot of functionality when we're talking about task triggers. In this case, this is me sending my intro emails out to my party members. So I'm going to go ahead and say the action that I'm looking for is when the task has been completed, I want to send an email. Okay. So think about it as like that. Choose action. If this task is completed or if it's not completed, what do I want to happen next? So trigger function is going to be in this case, I want to send out an email. I could send out a text message. Like I said, I could add or remove different templates, add or remove a field section or a field. So we'll go ahead and say email for now. These are going to be the two for sending out that email. And I'll say add. Once that's been added on there, this little preview window on the left or the right-hand side is going to pop up and show us the email that we could either type in if we wanted to type in an email. We can also apply an email template. 
My suggestion for all of you guys is to add in an email template. So if you guys are setting up your open to close account, I would first import all of your email templates and then I would import your task templates. And the reason I make this suggestion is so that you don't have these loose emails just sitting on these um, task templates. When we add in, if I just added in verbiage here, right? And I applied this to the property. If I needed to update this, update who I'm sending it to, update my subject, if I need to update, you know, the files that are attached to it or my email signature, I would have to update it for every single property that got this particular um, task template on it. If I use my email templates, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my intro email. We'll go ahead and do this one. And I apply that email template here. The only thing I need to update is the email template itself, right? So if I click on that email template, I've associated it here. And then I click on the title of that email template. Um, here we can see it's editing the master email template. When I say yes, I'm editing the entire, that email template for my entire database, my entire organization, which is a lot easier if you need to go in there and make minor tweaks. You're like, oh, you know what? I would prefer instead of saying hello, I want to main change it to hi, or I want to change my signature, you know, from um, sincerely to best wishes or something different, right? Maybe you need to add on another smart block or you need to add on a couple more merge fields. Having an email template is going to save you so much time when it comes to updating that verbiage. So here I can say yes, and I can actually preview the email template right here. So this is the master email template. If I make a change to this, it's going to change it for my whole organization. So here, if I needed to review it here, I can review the information on here. If I needed to preview anything, I can highlight, you know, my smart block and click on SB. It's going to pull up in that smart block for me. If I needed to add on any more documents, I can add on documents, um, attach through a file storage or upload attachments as well. And that's going to update that master email template. Once you feel good about that being connected though, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. And now we're, we've completed that trigger. Yeah. Thanks Todd. Yeah. Yeah. So the email templates, yeah, for sure. are Definitely like a very, very powerful tool. Um, and you know what for your thing, because we hear this, I hear, I do get this a lot. The whole drawback is if you need to include a specific email, right? This is where we would want to use those contact roles. If you look at this email, I'm going to go ahead and open it up again open this email up. What I want you to take notice is that I have a BCC on here and that BCC is my BCC on all buyer emails. Okay. So if I needed to CC a specific email address to this, something that I'm not sending it from, right? Cause if I'm, if I'm sending an email address from myself, I don't need a BCC myself as well, unless I want a copy of it in my outbox, in my set box, as well as my inbox which seems a little silly. I don't think that you guys would want that, but let's say I needed to be on it. And let's say my co-host Kelly also needed a copy of that email. What I would want to do is I would want to make sure that I have this BCC on all buyers emails on all of my buyers emails. And then I would want to make sure that that contact role is associated with Kelly. And then all I have to do is make sure Kelly's on the property. That's it. From there, when I go to send out this email, she's going to receive a copy of it. It doesn't have to be the title BCC on all buyer emails. It could be anything. You could make that con you could make that contact role say um, team email address, admin email address, whatever it needs to be. Um, you could say like archived email address, something like that. If you need a copy of those emails sent to a specific inbox, we would just want to make sure that we have the contact role associated with it, and we would want to make sure that that contact role is added to every single email that you have or email template you have in your database. That way, when you send out the email, and as long as that contact lives on there, they're gonna automatically receive it. I don't think I have an example of one on here. We've got that CC on all buyers emails. I thought I had a like a team email on here, but we don't necessarily use that. Um, on our end, when we're building out, we don't necessarily use something like that. Yeah, great tip, Todd. When we're talking about adding that contact rule to that property too, instead of having to have to search for Kelly and add her on every single time, I would also want to make sure that I have Kelly added as, as a connection to my agent contact. That way, when I bring my buyer's agent, seller's agent onto that property, Kelly comes on through that connection automatically with that role automatically assigned. So we know that those emails go there automatically. 
If you guys have questions about that, we can definitely do a review of our contact roles. Um, but, but yeah, no, that's a great tip too. So now we have this trigger built out, right? We can say close. And now we see that this little lightning bolt icon is here. This shows us that this trigger is added to this particular email. Depending on what plan you're on will depend on how many triggers you can have. So in my case, I'm on the scale account. I can create as many task triggers as I need. If you're on the pro account, you'll also be able to create unlimited task triggers. If you are on the grow account, you are only going to be able to create three task triggers per task. So we'll go ahead and say completed and we want to send a text message as well. And then we'll go ahead and say when it's completed, we also, or not completed, um, we want to send out a text message as well. So this would be the limit for all of you who are on the grow plan. You would only be able to create up to three triggers per task. Okay. So you can go to the second task and you can add on, maybe this is the intro email to buyer, just the buyer. And you've got another set of three emails that go out to your, to your, um, to the seller's agent, to the lender, to escrow, or to an attorney. You can have that here. This one's going to your other party members and you can create those three triggers on this particular task. Um, if you find yourself, okay, if you're on the grow plan and you find yourself going, I really don't want to have so many tasks. I want to have like 14 tasks. And I want one of my tasks to be able to queue up and send out six emails. It might be worth it to investigate and see if the pro plan, that's going to be that plan up from the grow plan, would be a worthy investment for you. Because if you're at that point where you're like, I want it to be easy peasy lemon squeezy, you might want to look into signing up for that pro plan. Um, if you guys are interested in switching around your plans, definitely feel free to reach out to us and we can talk to you about the use cases and is it the right time for me to move over? Um, I usually like to take a look at your account, talk with you and try to figure out what are you using right now? What could you be using before you make that decision? Cause obviously it's an, it's an increase in the price. Um, but also I don't want you to miss out on any features. That's the main thing is I don't want you to miss out on, I don't want you to upgrade and you go, well, I just did this. And we go, wait, you didn't create more smart blocks. You didn't create more intake forms. You didn't use that DocuSign integration. You haven't been using webhooks. You don't have your colors for your fields. There's so many other tools that are available to you when you make that upgrade from grow to pro. I know I went on a little side tangent there. Um, any other questions on tasks though? Are we feeling pretty good about like the setup for these so far though? Cool. Ken's got a question. Uh, is there, will there be a way to export templates? Our TC leads want a paper copy of each of the email and task templates. Oh, that's a lot. Um, so I actually have a trick for this um, that I really love <laughs> that I like to use, which is my one sheets. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and just say Hannah's trick. And it's a pretty cool one, I think. We're going to go to Hannah's trick and what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, if we need to pull in any details, we can pull in any details here. Um, but what we can also do is we can update and it might not be on here. It actually might be on our, what's it called? Let me see our layout really quickly. Here we go. What we can do is we can go create Hannah's trick, go to layout, scroll all the way to the bottom and you see where it says pin tasks, completed tasks, scheduled tasks, and unscheduled tasks. We can select each one of these. Okay. What this is going to do is it's going to populate this one sheet with all of those tasks. This is specifically focusing on just tasks right now. So here we've selected all of those things for the tasks. What we're going to do is we're going to go back up. We need to add on who we're emailing it to, all that stuff we can, but we really don't need it, right? We're just trying to pull a list of the task templates. Right now, we don't have a way to export. If you go to these, you'll have the option to clone it, delete it, but there is no way to export the task template out but we can use our one sheets to pull a list of our tasks. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to a property. Let me see my Ivy Lane has tasks on it, right? Cool. So this Ivy Lane has tasks, my main under contract, appraisal, finance, and HOA tasks. I'm going to just resync the dates to make sure that our dates are synced up correctly. We're going to head over to one sheet and we're going to create a one sheet. We're going to name this Hannah's trick again and say submit. And then here, we're going to apply that template, Hannah's trick, apply. And now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll to the bottom and we can say preview or download. I'm going to go ahead and say preview because it opens it up in a new tab and boom, that's my task list. 
So what I would suggest, if you wanted to use this particular trick, um, I would suggest doing it at the very beginning of that particular population of that property with those tasks on it, because as you can see, it is showing me the completed tasks up here at the very, very top. I can technically reorder it if I need to. Um, if I wanted to reorder it, I would want to go back over to the layout in my one sheet. So exiting out of the property, templates, heading down to one sheet, editing Hannah's trick, going to layout. And then here, I would just want to reorder the layout for these. So here, if I wanted completed tasks to be at the bottom, I could bring them to the bottom. And then that's going to update that layout for us. We go back to that property. I don't know if it's static updates it or not. We'll see. We'll go back to Hannah's trick. We'll just say preview. So you can see when I applied the template, I would need to apply it again if I wanted to get the update. So we'll go just go back to that. We'll apply that template again. That way we can get the update out in the layout. You can see here now that completed tasks at the bottom. But when we say download, we can download a PDF version of this that's printable. I'm going to go ahead and just open that up. And this is what it looks like. We've got the name of that task at the top. If there were any pinned tasks, we'd see them at the top with the due date. We'd see the scheduled tasks, unscheduled tasks, and tasks that have already been completed. And this is a great way to have a printed version of that task template. Now, when it comes to the emails, I don't necessarily have a the best way to have emails also printed, not in the same way as we have this list that we can pull. Um, what I would probably suggest is you can just go to emails. You can head to any sent emails here. This is going to be all of the sent emails. You can select that email here. It's going to show you this preview. And if you need to, you can print it out. Or, I mean, again, if you're sending it through your Google integration, you should be able to just go into, um, you know, if you needed to, you can impersonate the user that you need to pull the emails from. You can go to their inbox and it's not going to load for me, or maybe it will. It looks like it doesn't, but you can go to their inbox and you can go to sent mail. Or like I said, you can go to that property specific and you can go to the sent mail to see what's been sent. Um, you just need to have access to impersonate. Your TC leads should have access to impersonate the other teams. So they should be able to go through and kind of see the emails that have already been sent out. Um, any questions on how I was able to get this task list? Um, or if you guys want me to go through it one more time, but slower, I know I went through that pretty quick, but I think this is pretty cool. I love this as a way to be able to grab a list of the tasks that are specific to this particular property. You can see here that we've got HOA ones, it tasks in here as, as well as our appraisal ones as well. Um, so it's showing us all of the tasks. Cool. 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 Alrighty guys. Well, we're at, uh, about almost three quarters of the way through with this training. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to drop them into the Q and a, um, and we'll go over them. I'm just going to see if there was any other FAQs that we could cover on this call. Okay. Doesn't look like there's any other FAQs that we can cover on this call. Um, there's been no changes to the change log since the 12th. Um, so if you guys wanted to see what are some things that have changed with an open and close, you're just going to go over to your little person icon, go down to our change log, and then you should see any of the changes that we've made recently. Um, Anytime we push out changes, we push them to here. So if you guys are like, you know, I submitted a ticket and I haven't heard back from open to close, um, but I noticed that the issue, I'm not seeing it anymore in my account, definitely check out the change log um, as well, because we could have pushed it out over the weekend um, and just haven't reached out to you yet because our support is only Monday through Friday. Um, so keep that in mind too. If you're like, huh, it's fixed, but it wasn't fixed before, but now it is fixed. Um, we might not have not reached out to you yet. You can check our change log for any of those updates. Cool. Alrighty, guys. Any other questions from here? Anything else that we wanted to review today? Awesome. 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 Um, I will say this. We talked about task templates. We talked about importing them. We talked about setting them up. We didn't talk about 
attaching our task templates to the other parts of the system to make sure that they come onto our properties correctly, either through the property template or through a different task trigger or through an intake form trigger. Um, we can definitely do a review of that on our intake form call next Tuesday. Um, but I can also do a touch on it right now because that might be helpful. Um, oh yeah, no, yeah. So Todd's mentioning that that um, we got a video of the updates with Brokermit. If any of you guys are Brokermit users and you've been looking for like more autom like more, you know, cool stuff to do with that integration, we have stuff coming down the pipeline. We have quite a number of things coming down the pipeline with that. Um, we were able to meet with Brokermit and talk a little bit more about what you guys are needing, what we're able to provide and what they're able to provide. Um, and the conversation was so wonderful. It was like a really good conversation. <laughs> yeah. You know, Todd, I, we really appreciate it because it really put us on the right track with, to, to getting this conversation open and getting us uh, set up to be able to have a, a much more integrated connection with Brokermit. The cool thing about Brokermit, if you guys aren't using Brokermit, um, the cool thing about it is that Brokermit will give you one API, one singular API that you use for your entire account. So we've set it up now with an open and close that when you have a Brokermit API, and I, I think I have one, I might not. Let me go to manage profiles, current connections. Okay, so I don't have one right now on here. But the way it would work is similar to how we have our follow-up boss account set up. So you would go to manage profiles, you'd go to current connections, similar to how you do it for follow-up boss, manage profiles, current connections, and you just have one API. Here you would select your little person icon and you'd give access to the other team members on your account, access to that API. And then that's it. The other uh, team TCs that you have on your account, the other internal users, they don't need to have that API replicated again. You really just need to connect it here. Yeah, Todd's saying I can show his account. I'd have to go through all the things of getting that set up to pull it on there, though, to, to do that. But I appreciate your um, uh, your willingness to share that information. If anyone is interested, if, if you're like, I'm a Brokerman user, how does that look for me? Definitely feel free to reach out to us and support, and we'll help you walk through it. Um, there's been a couple different updates, so we should be able to get those articles updated as soon as we make sure that we have all the information correct. Cool. Looks like we have a, another question from Amanda. Do I have to have a Google Workspace account in order to connect a calendar? If no, can you walk through how to do this? So it depends. If we are talking about, I want to see this calendar here. I want to see my calendar pull in here. You have to have a Google Workspace account. Not only do you have to have a Google Workspace account, but you also have to make sure that that calendar is public. So that's one thing that's like, uh, do I really want to have a calendar view within open and close? Now, the reason that those two things need to be done is because number one, Google count, Google workspace is the only place that's giving us access to be able to pull in a view of the calendar. And number two, the reason that Google does that is because the only way they can have it is if it's public. So it, it not only is something that's specific to Google workspace, but it also has to be a public calendar for you to even use the tool. Um, I don't see a lot of people using it. Sometimes people will have a sub calendar with very general information on it that they want to have on there. Um, but I don't usually see people using it because when we send out those invites, it, usually it's got the address and it's got the recipients on it. And sometimes it can have the date and exactly what they're doing. And that kind of information can be private, right? We don't want to share that every time. Now, if you guys are talking about on the property, Hannah, I just want to be able to send out a calendar invite you absolutely can send out a calendar invite through there. So you don't need to connect it underneath this area, but you do need to make sure that you have your integrations connected either through Google or through Microsoft, okay? You can have it connected here through either of these if you wanna push it out. Now, how do I push it out, Hannah? I'm gonna go to a property. Once I'm on that property, let's say it's a brand new property. Let me see my French camp because it's still brand new here. Here's my brand new property in French camp. This is the steps that I would take to make this connection to my calendar. Number one, I would go to my contacts and I would expand my contacts and I would make sure that whoever needs to be included on all of these calendar invites is selected now, okay? So if you have yourself and you want it synced to your calendar, you want it synced to the buyer's agent or the listing agent's calendar, make sure you have this selected first. 
Once you've made sure to add that on here, include on all calendar date invites, we're going to go up to this little drop down icon next to transaction details. It might say property details for you guys. It might say listing details, depends on what you have up in this area. But we're going to go to this little drop down and we're going to select defaults and settings. From here, we're going to scroll down until we see our property date sync. Here, I can click on calendars. And it's going to show me all of the calendars that I have currently available. I'm using Google Workspace, so it's showing all of my Google Workspace calendars. If you guys are using um, Microsoft, it should show your Microsoft calendars. Specifically, when we talk about Microsoft calendars, it's going to be the calendars that are associated with that Microsoft account. So if you're looking for a specific calendar and you don't see it here, you might need to go into Microsoft to make sure that that calendar has been made available to that particular email address or that particular user. Um, looks like, Amanda, you're raising your hand. I'm sure you've got some more details. Let me see. I know that last time I tried to set it up so that I could unmute people. Let me see if that setting is available. Okay, awesome. So you should be able to unmute. What's your question? Apologies. I was trying to get back to the Q&A. My question is... <sighs> Oh crap. Now, now I'm on the spot. Um, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> it, when I send, when you send a calendar invite, do you mm -hmm. have, would there be any reason that you need to differentiate a certain calendar for each property? Or if you're sending it from like a connected Microsoft account, would you normally just send them all right? Just from the yeah. main calendar, would there be any, I guess I'm just trying to think if I set up doing that way, will I regret it? Is there a reason why you could see, oh, you don't want to do that? I not necessarily know. I mean, unless you have like a ton of calendars, which I would not recommend this because that's a lot to take care of. Unless you have calendars that are specific to that property address that you create every single time, that would be the only time you would need to have that. In my case, because I'm Google and it's my team, this is my entire team. This is all my teams. <laughs> calendars showing up for me here. Those are the yeah. ones that I have permission to, but you shouldn't have any issue just going and, you know, I'm going to grab Hannah because that's me and just syncing it to that one calendar. We can, because to your question, we can go to a specific date. We can say that we want to sync it with an additional different calendar if we want to, but when we I send see. out that invite, so if I send it out to Jill, it's going to add it to Jill's calendar, right? Mm -hmm. So it sends that invite to them. So if you send it out to a buyer let's say you send it to my personal calendar, it's going to show up on my personal calendar, but it's not going to say, oh, it's also on your Microsoft calendar as well. Um, it'll okay. send an invite to that Microsoft calendar, but when the the client receives it or the agent receives it, it shows up in as, as an event on their calendar specifically. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, it does. I have one other question and I'm sorry, yeah. I probably could have tested this, but I no, didn't no worries. before. No worries. I just thought of it. If I wanted to set up, I was going to set up like an option to have agents go, do you want us to send you calendar advice for all contract deadlines or for certain contract deadlines? Mm -hmm. If I do that and we're setting the, sending those essentially through those field sections, when I, those calendar invites are sent, will it show as busy that whole day on their calendar or will it show as free, but add it to the calendar? You know what I mean? Cause I yeah. guess I know when something gets added to my calendar and it marks that I'm busy, I'm like, Oh no, am I, you know, yeah. I was hoping it would be free. It blocks off your whole day. Right. I believe it depends. I want to say that right now it defaults to busy and it marks it as all day, but I wanted to say that if they have a start and an end time, it blocks off that start and end time. So if you specifically say the home inspection is going to be from like 12 to two, I yeah. want to say that the calendar invite also reflects that 12 to two. It might not. Okay. We'll is there any testing? way to yeah. leave it as a full day, but make it free or open? That no. would be the other thing I would want to test too. I, I feel like recently we had an update and Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong, if, if you know off the top of your head, I want to say that we had an update recently that made it so that it was always marked as free. So it put oh. the calendar invite on there, but it had it always as free. I'll just have to check with my team. Okay. That'd be great to find out. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Great question. And, and no worries. Like if I, I like that you guys are able to ask the questions live like this, sometimes this will work a lot easier because you can explain exactly what you're trying to, uh, trying to see <laughs> yeah. what you're trying to look at. So yeah. Perfect. Thanks. No worries. 
Alrighty guys. Well, if there's any other questions, please feel free to drop them into the Q and a Amanda, I'm just going to go ahead and mute you. And then I should be able to lower your hand. Perfect. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to drop them into the Q and a otherwise we are 10 minutes out. Um, so I can always talk about my end of call stuff, the same stuff that I covered at the beginning of the call. If you guys are looking for more webinars, like today's webinar, you can head to our open to close website, click on the learn tab and go to webinars and you'll see our upcoming webinars. We just completed Wednesday workshop. Next Tuesday, I'll be going over intake forms, property templates, and next Wednesday, I'll be going over using Open to Close 101. Um, again, I like to leave the, well, mainly the using Open to Close 101, similar to how we did our settings and integrations call earlier today. I like to leave those open-ended because it really depends on who joins. If you join and you have very specific questions, for example, kind of like how Amanda was asking about calendars and how to set that up, I would like to cater that training to you to make sure that you know how you would be setting it up versus this is a way you could set it up along with these 50 other ways that I might have shared, right? So joining that call, doing the same thing of unmuting or asking your questions live, that's totally appropriate on that call as well. Um, if you guys are looking for help though, you need help out from us. You can either use that chat icon at the bottom of our website. You can also go into your open to close account and chat with us there. Um, or you can send us an email at help at open to close looms, screenshots, that kind of stuff is very, very helpful for us. It makes it so much easier for us to identify what you're running into and how we can best assist you. Um, if we don't get that information, usually we end up reaching out and asking for it, right? We end up saying, can you send us a loom? We want to know where you're clicking. There's so many ways to do something and open and close. It's easier if we see the way that you're doing it to best guide you from there. Um, other than that, like I mentioned earlier, we do have more onboarding resources as well. You can go to our learn tab, head to onboarding. Um, and here you'll see our options that we have currently. We have the do it yourself. This is the free side of using open or, or getting onboarded into open to close. We've got the do it with you. It's where you'd be working with our implementation team, specifically a team member on that team to go in and customize your account together with them. And then do it hourly. This is really helpful if you're like, I just need like a you know, monthly retainer of a couple hours to meet with your team to make sure that I've got my system set up or just to come on and have more one-on-one -on -one QA time. Um, that can be used for this as well. I usually suggest though, if you wanna do it hourly, I suggest thinking up the three, four things that you want to complete in your account. If you're like, Hannah, I wanna make sure that my escrow process is like really, really, really tight. Like my just my main under contract, I wanna make sure that I have it really, really smooth we can work on something like that. If you're like, I wanna make sure that my intake forms are completing this particular part. I wanna make it that it's super easy. All of this has been set up. It asks the correct questions. It populates the fields correctly. It brings onto my task templates correctly. That's a great thing to do for that call. Or if you're like, you know what? I actually wanna take it to the next step. I would love to be able to have more hands-on training with my um, TCs on how to customize and use the account. Um, they have further questions for that. That's another great, reason to to use the do it hourly or, or sign up for hourly calls. There's a couple things with it. Obviously, communication, talking with our team and figuring out what makes the most sense for you guys, that's going to be the priority. Awesome, guys. Well, I will go ahead and let you guys go. Everyone, make sure that you're drinking water. Make sure that you're staying well rested. Go have a snack. Take some vitamin C. It's always good to have those things unless you have health restrictions, then don't do that. But if you do not have that, vitamin C is always good. We're hitting spring, which means we are going to be running into a lot of snuffles and coughs. If you guys have not already been hit with that, most of my family has been sick recently as well. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, Todd. Thanks everyone else for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys next week.